Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have here a Subaru Outback to have a look at. We also have an Audi here as well, as well as a Transit just over there. Okay, so we're going to get inside the Subaru. This one is the Outback. So they also do the, the Legacy. Yeah, so there's a few different sort of types of models of these, but they're all pretty much the same car. Subaru Legacy, um, Outback. Um, I'm not sure of the rest of them. Right, so we have. Let's have a look at the diagnostic scan tool here. Okay, so I've already run a scan. The ABS system is chucking a fault, and the parking brake, all of those things. But the main issues that we have here is P1469. If we go to the ECM codes, it gives us a description that it's in limp home mode, and it's got. A block TPF. Now if we go to live data for that, so here we have live data and we're going to look at some of the DPF data here. So we'll just click all of these and if we have anything else regarding soot Or differential pressure. Sometimes they can be called delta pressure or DPF inlet pressure. Regeneration. Okay, we have 60, 70 millibars of pressure at idle, and we have regeneration count 289, estimated DPF temperature, soot accumulation is at 237%, last time it tried to do a regen was 500 kilometers ago, is it? So these Subarus, like all of the sort of Asian type cars, so we have Toyota, Honda, Subaru, Kia, they all pretty much behave exactly the same. So if your oil level rises, they all have an issue where the oil level continuously raises in the engine because it gets past the piston rings. Um, then you get a DPF blockage because once the oil level is registered that it's too high, your DPF won't regen. The next one is that the AC system. So here I've switched on the AC. This customer says he, don't, he doesn't ever use it, but I've turned it on and tested that the AC is called um, Honda, Toyota. Again, if the AC doesn't work, a lot of the models won't um, do a passive region and you will get a block TPF. Most of these cars also will give you these skid control, ABS, parking lights and all of that sort of stuff come up when the DPF gets blocked. It disables all of that. A lot of them also disable the cruise control so you will get cruise control ECM errors and ABS ECM errors but once the DPF fault is fixed they go away. So some of the things that I'm checking on this is of course that like I said the AC is working the next one we're going to check is the engine oil level we don't want the oil level to be any more than halfway so you have minimum maximum you want it to be sort of in the center just below halfway you don't want it anywhere near the, the maximum level of the engine oil. Okay, so we have this Subaru Boxer diesel engine. Diesel particulate filter is down here. And we have a DPF pressure sensor just there where those two tubes are. Okay, so we've got a manometer attached to the DPF there. So you've got two pipes. The skinnier one is after the DPF. And then you've got a slightly larger diameter tube there. So that's the one we're going to be putting the cleaning fluid into. Okay, so what we're going to do is take some of this oil out. Or where I'd like that to be is sort of... No, not done that right. So really, that's where you want it to be sitting. A little bit below halfway. So we've just got a, an oil extractor taking some out. 
Okay, so I've got my compressor here. It's hooked up. That comes down to the car here. And we use the Lance UK kit, as usual with this fluid. I know it is quite hard to get hold of at the moment. Launch UK, as this video has been recorded, they're doing a transition between Launch UK and Launch Europe. Launch Europe are taking over Launch UK. So they're doing a transition and obviously because of that they're low on stock of these. So but I have got I have got a lot of these in, in, in my own stock so luckily enough I'm 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 kept going for a moment. So what I'm gonna do now with this is I'm just gonna put a little bit of the cleaner into the DPF and let that soak just a little bit so as normal this compressor is set up to 9 bar which I think is around 130 psi ok back in the car we start the engine up now I can put the rest of the fluid in while the engine is running see maybe this engine is ok because the DPF sits quite low but it is very very close to the engine so I like doing these with the engine running if you've got a DPF that sits sort of midway back under the car down there, you're normally fine to just fill the DPF up with the fluid and then start the engine afterwards. But if it's close to the engine like this, it's much safer to have the engine running while you're you're putting in your fluid because you, if you do backfill it into the turbo, it will get sucked in and hydro like your engine. So you just need to be careful on that. It's not something I've ever done, but I've heard stories of many people doing it. Now in particular with that, I get a lot of people with the Vauxhall Vivaros or Renault Traffics saying that they've tried my my um, cleaning method on the upstream pressure pipe and now the engine won't start because I know what they've done, they've they've overloaded it with fluid and while the engine was off down through the upstream pressure pipe and um, that will hydrolock the engine. Um, i trying to think of any other vehicles that people have issues with. Okay, so now we are back in the car. We're gonna now hold the revs up on the engine. Up around sort of 3,000 RPM. Then we keep an eye on our pressure of the DPF there. You'll see that coming down. I think a Reasonable sort of, let me just hold the rev steady on this for a minute. Reasonable sort of area to see this at would be, I think, sort of 30 to 40 millibars. Most cars are generally the same, same sort of area, but some cars, you know, they can vary very, very slightly. Now, a good, a good, um, for instance on that would be Ford Transit like that one over there 8 or 9 millibars idle would, would be fine you can get away with that but if it was a Renault traffic 9 millibars of pressure on idle would it would be the end of the DPF there, there are very very there's a very small margin on the Renault traffics ok now we have the engine off the pressure has come down enough so what we're going to do is Reset the DPF basically. Writing, e reading DPF oil related learning values. You see that, so I was talking about the oil related learning values there for the DPF. So we're going to click on DPF change. It's going to reset all of that. So you have to make sure the DPF's been cleaned before you do that. And then what we're also going to do with this is just tell it that it's had an oil change. I'm not sure if this is going to work on the scan tool or not, but yeah, it has. Sometimes the oil resets need to be done manually. So now we're going to go back from here and we'll do a full code delete of all of these faults here. So we need to clear it from the OBD as well as here. That's why I'm coming back. We also need to clear all of these ABS faults. Right now if we cycle the key on and off, let's start the engine back up. We should have all the lights off. Okay now by resetting the DPF we have reset the soot accumulation to zero. The DPF pressure now is 10, which has come down a lot, but we need to get a little bit lower than that if we can. 
So the DPF symbol has come back on, so what I'm doing is holding the revs again for a minute. Now the engine on this car doesn't sound the best to me, it sounds a bit lumpy. Um, you can feel a slight judder on the engine, uh, but I can't see what's causing that. Um, it does sound like it's breathing heavy, but I noticed it has got a K&N filter on it, which can make the engine sound a bit... bit yeah, so what that's actually trying to do there is it's, it's trying to regenerate again. And if we hold the revs up, you can see that the percentage of the soot is coming back up. It keeps going to sort of 100% back down to sort of 60, 80 and back again. See, when the DPF's getting hot, the pressure is increasing. 3000 RPM now, we have 60, which doesn't seem too bad, 50 to 60. You see the percentage again is coming down again as the temperature comes down. When the temperature gets hot, the... the soot accumulation is actually rising up so when it's doing a regen the soot accumulation according to the live data is increasing because the pressure is increasing on the DPF when it gets hot which indicates a damaged DPF slightly so it's evened out at 60 millibars and 60% accumulation if we let it idle down it doesn't want to go but below 10 so it's it's on the borderline of needing a new DPF this car. So it's a semi success story. Unfortunately, it's not a full success. It's gonna need a new DPF soon, this car. So you probably can't hear on video, but it just sounds like it's breathing a little bit heavy. Um it's got a KN filter on it, which I think will affect the sound of the engine. Yeah, she's too much, too much blow by pressure. Engines, engines not great on this car. So it turns out the airbox isn't connected properly down the bottom. There's a gap in it. That's why it sounds weird. Okay, we're gonna get the airbox reconnected properly, and we'll leave that video at this, and I'll see you on the next next video.